guys welcome to my channel learn with w3 schools today we're going to learn about xml http request so my name is dr dishan if you are here for the first time and want to learn xml and coding don't forget to subscribe i already have a part one of xml tutorial that covers major of all these components so make sure you follow along and link is in description let's begin now xml http request is a built-in object that allows us to request data from the server by that we mean that using this xml http request object we can request data and receive the data from the server it is an absolute dream for web developers every web developer loves this and needs to know about this xml http request object why is it the dream of every developer and every developer must be knowing how to use this because using xml http request object you can update the web page we can request the data from a server you can receive the data from a server send the data to a server without actually having the need of reloading the content so without ever actually having the need to re requesting and the reloading the web page you can request the data from a web server okay so that's that's the major advantage of using this xml http object that's why every developers actually love this and needs to know about this okay so if you want to reload uh, if you want to sorry request the data from a server without requiring the reloading option and without needing to reload the web page every time we need to use this so what it exactly can do it can update a web page it can request data from a server it can receive the data from a server at the same time it can send the data to server so it basically performs all major operations without having the uh, need of reloading the content so at the back end your data will automatically be reloaded and going to display to the user without the entire page being reloaded okay so how does this work well it works in a very simple manner so when you type in a character in an input field the http request object is sent to the server and some name suggestions are returned from the server so this is what happens so if i type something here for example hello okay what it does is that it will take this data and send to the server and the information is sent back without actually reloading this entire web page got it so how does this actually is work let's see an example to understand the basic concept so what we do now is we try to see the first thing you do is you create the new object using xml http requests okay and then that object is returned and saved in this particular variable so once the data is saved inside the variable now we use this variable to create uh, to access a default function called on ready state change now this on state ready change function is executed when there is a change in state meaning that they when there's a response from a server so whenever we response we receive a response from a server or we need to send a response to the server we execute this on ready state change function inside this xml http object okay that we just created once this method is executed we call a function again this is what we call a runtime function executed at the runtime or created at the runtime so we say function brackets are back close since it doesn't have a name means it's a runtime one time execution function only on the time every time the rest state is changed so we say hey there's a function block star block close so inside this block clause we perform two main operations first we check whether there was in fact a state change requested by the system okay requested by your system or not so if the request state is 4 and the status is 200 meaning the state was in fact changed then you need to perform this operation more about this function we have already talked about in the previous functions again the, this whole detailed tutorial about xml is in the links description or you can click on the eye icon to find that tutorial so do watch it to find out more about how xml is working and how it's traversing the elements okay so what we now do is we say hey go inside the document get in me an element by uh, this demo name change its inner html to this xml http response text now where this response text comes from it actually comes from this function here so what we do is we use again this xhttp object we open a file called file name you can open a file or you can get a response from a server depends what it is the location can change and we set the states to true to the yes we want to read the data so when this status is changed basically it will call this function here and then so again sorry when this status is changed it will call this function here and this function will actually change the inner html based on the content of this file once this is done simple as that so let's try to see the full example of it so if you click on try it now this is the entire html for it now what's happening is that we create a simple html we have a div tag with an id called demo keep an eye on that because we will use this id here to change the content okay and we have a button so basically again we don't want to refresh the page we want to trigger an event that would execute this http request so we have a button so as soon as i click on a button which is on click it will execute this load xml document so this load xml document function will be called 
from here okay so as soon as i click on it this function will be called this function will create an object of xml http request and then after the object has been created it will check the ready state change if the state has been changed it will execute this body but currently no state has been changed so it will come here xml http open get xml info so it will go and open this state here now we get information from our server that will allow us to change the state of the content so it will say hey yes now we have a record a request that reads the content area oh sorry will read the content file and then status is basically changed once this is done then this function on the ready state change gets executed so now this gets executed so we have a function block star block close this will check whether the ready state change is 4 and the status is 200 ensuring that we have a change in function which is this uh, std uh, html document and then i will say find an element by id called demo this element id is found then change its inner html so we need to change the inner content of this demo id is equals to this dot response so this basically means this x http request object will send a response to us so instead of this we can write x http here as well and we can say response text so this response text actually is coming from here the text that we have inside this file so once we read the file only then this function will be executed and then this will change the content here so if i check it out we can say hey as soon as i click on it see the content change it without refreshing the page the content got changed because we clicked on this button here as soon as we clicked on it the function got executed the file was read and the function on state change method was executed it has a runtime function called function without any name block star block close it ensured and there's a safety mechanism that the, yes the state was changed from the http and then update the content area so the content got updated okay so this is how basically very simply an xml http request object works very easy very simple you can use an on click event to execute a function that actually changes the state of it now this file can come from a text file or this response can come from a text file or a server location okay so we can send a server location uh, server request and then it will change the server uh, content based on the server request okay so this is what basically this is trying to do so if you come down it's kind of giving us a little bit more explanation on this w3 schools website it says the first line in the example above creates the xml http request object so this is creating the xml http request object just like we talked about then on ready state and change property specifies a function to be executed every time the status of an xml request object changes so this function will execute every time the status of this object request changes this status is changed using the open method okay so we create xml as uh, http dot on ready state change function okay so this property is specified using of and then is having a function that is created at runtime then as we go along it checks the ready state properties for meaning that ensuring that the ready state change is there and the status has is 200 ensuring again the status has also been uploaded the response is ready because the response is ready now i can change the content of my web html so we say a document go inside lm html document find an id called demo change its inner html and then the inner html is going to be whatever this xml response has been returned from the server in this case in this example we use an ex, um, simple text file to read it it can be a server address which can be based on php and then can request a data from the server and then you can populate that on your file here okay so this is how simply xml http request object works hope it explains many things so um, do leave your comment if you found this useful and i will be talking about xml parser in my next video and more into xml dom and xpath and xlts so these video lectures are coming up so don't forget to subscribe leave your comments below Thank you very much. This is Dr. Zishan signing off.